All right, we are finally here. The video where we finish up our modal. It only took us, what, like 10 episodes, 11 episodes into this series. And the last four, including this one, have been dedicated to creating a modal. So go check those out if you want to know the basics. But here's where we're at. By the end of this video, we're going to update the data showing up on the main page. So we got this sick modal here. It's crazy how cool it is, but it doesn't change what's over here. So if I hit update, well, currently it does nothing. It actually refreshes the page. We got this question mark here and none of the data actually changes. So for a single page application, we want to avoid any page refreshes whenever we can. And we want the data to be updated dynamically when it's changed in state. So right now we pretty much have two pieces of state. The first piece of state is the state right here, which is a temporary holder for what is typed in into these boxes here. The other piece of state actually comes from app.js, this data right here, which is all in state. So how do we update this data from this data? And the way you do it, well, you gotta think of how is our structure currently? Well, we have our top component, which is app.js, this has a component in it, which is the employee. And then inside of the employee, we have the edit modal, which includes the button and the modal itself. So a friendly reminder first that props are not meant to be changed by the components. Even in the modal component, we created state to be able to change it. We had to create that extra state variable. So if we wanted to change the state from a parent, we actually need to pass down a function a callback function that'll be executed when we want to, which can then change the state in the original component. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're going to head over to app.js and we're going to create a function. We can just define that here. We'll say function update employee. Now we're going to need a way to identify which employee to update. We're going to use an ID for that. And then we're also going to need the new data that we're going to replace the old data with. So you could do that as an object or just as separate values. Since we're only having basically two values, name and role, it's really not that complicated just to have separate parameters here. So we'll say new name, new role. And we'll just for now say console log update employee inside of app.js. So we can see if we're actually getting this function to execute. Now, what we do is we go down to where we have our employee and we're going to include another prop here. Update employee is going to be equal to update employee. So you don't have to do anything fancy with the naming, just keep everything consistent. Then we'll go into employee. We're gonna do the same exact thing, passing it down to edit employee. So we'll say update employee, but this time we have to say props.edit employee because it's a property now. So we'll save, did a little bit of reformatting for us. And then lastly, we'll go down to edit employee and it should be available to us. So what we'll do is on click of that final button, scrolling down and finding that this update, we can say on click. And actually, now that I think about it, this is one way of doing it if you just wanted the button to submit the data versus using the form. But there's a better option since we're within a form. We can scroll up and at the start of the form, we could say on submit. And this is going to be a function and it's going to invoke update employee. The form data is available to us. We can access it through a variable on the parameter here. We'll just call it E. And there's a few things we're going to need to do here as well. The first one is E dot prevent default. And that is how you prevent a page refresh. Additionally, I'm going to do a console log just so we can see the function be invoked here. And say hello from edit employee. And let's go ahead and console log all the data that we need for the function. So the ID and the name and the role. And I know we haven't defined the ID yet. Don't worry about that, we're gonna do that here soon. And we'll just need to pass all that information to the update employee. So all we need to do now is add an ID to our employees so we can easily identify them. This will be from app.js. I don't even use this Tailwind file or this index.js, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. So let's go ahead and add an ID to each one of these 
doesn't really matter. We'll just go with numbers and increment. Pretty standard surrogate key here. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you guys remember when I introduced the idea of using an ID there. And that was when we were using this key here. So since we have a unique ID for each one of these, you no longer need to use a GUID. So you could just say employee.id. And we're not going to console log the GUID either. This ID we need passed down as well. So I'm going to actually put that after the key. So we'll say ID is equal to employee.id. Same thing, it's going to have to be passed down from employee. So where we have an edit employee, we'll say ID is props.id. Lastly, we should now have access to it here. But it's going to actually be props.id. So why is this one props ID and the others are not props ID? Well, that's because this name is referring to this state variable here, as well for the role variable, where we haven't created a state variable for the ID. We actually don't really need a state variable because we're not updating that value at all. So we'll just stick with props.id here. All right, so that was a lot of changes. Hopefully something works. Let's go to our page. We have one issue, update employee is not defined on edit employee line 38. This is going to be props.update employee because it comes from props. Now our page is working. We can go in here and we should be able to change some of this data. Let's open up the console and we'll clear that out. Let's just change her name to something, I don't know, something more common. We'll hit update. We get some errors. I think this just comes down to a typo because I accidentally used edit employee. So we need to pass down update employee. Yeah, uh, not too bad. I only had like one issue. Hopefully that'll work. We'll hit update. Let's see what we get. And it says hello from the edit employee. We got the ID too, the name Salamander and the manager role. And it goes all the way up to app.js where it gets those values. So far, what we have is a success. The first time doing this, it's a little confusing, like so many different layers, but we still have one more thing to do. We have to take the data that has reached app.js and we need to update its state. So heading back over to app.js, let's find the update employee function, which we defined right here. And let's figure out what we need to do to change the state. Well, the first thing we need to figure out what one of these elements we need to change. So you can loop through, check for their ID. And if you find it, you can replace the name and the role. And eventually you could do the image as well. But right now we're just working with the text. So let's go ahead and create a variable updated employees. And we're going to use map to our advantage. And then at the end of this, after we've updated our list, I'll show you what to put in here in a second. I just wanna not forget the main thing, which is to actually change the state. So we'll say set employees and pass in updated employees. So pretty much this whole function is just to create a new list and replace the state list. So inside a map, this is going to take a function. So parentheses, arrow, curly braces. Inside of the parentheses, each iteration, it's going to be assigned to this variable. So we'll call it the singular version employee. And all we're gonna do is just check for the ID being employee.id. If that's the case, then we will return the new employee. Otherwise, we will just return the employee as is. So we can create a new object using this fancy syntax here. So we're just going to say return dot 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 employee, which will expand out any of the attributes of employee and put it in this curly braces, which is the new object. So this is called spreading if you want to learn more about that. And then we're just going to set the name to new name and the role to new role. This will do the trick. So let's save and let's go try it out. So let's go in here and we'll update one of these. Update, close out of it, and you can see the data changed. Fabulous, we did it. So just to go over the syntax one more time, 
if you were basically trying to visualize a different way of doing this, instead of using this spread thing, you can basically just replace all of the elements. So you could say image is new image, and that would replace all of them. The only thing is you will need to get the new image as a parameter, or if you just wanted to force it to stay the same, you could just do that. This should work as well. So let's try it. Uh, image is not defined, so let's just uh, say employee.image. There we go. Let's try it again. Let's do a refresh. Obviously, this data is not stored in a database anywhere, so it's not going to stay after refreshing. So we'll change this to Johnny, and it updates. Works fine. Let's change their role. So his name is his role as well now. So everything appears to be working. Oh, I just thought of a problem though, because if you see right here down here, it says undefined. We basically nuked the ID when we got rid of that spread. So you got to be careful that you make sure you grab all of the elements, which the easiest way to do that is to not do it manually and just have it do it automatically. So we'll just do that and then just replace name and role. That's the smarter way of doing it. I was trying to be handy and show a different way, but You'll need to make sure you have the ID and the image and any other attributes you end up adding if you don't want to replace them. So let's try this again and make sure we don't get an undefined. So let's do a refresh. So we'll just repeat that. So update Johnny. Update. All right. It has a three. Why is it not closing? I think we need to add into here. Handle close. Let's try that. Hit update. There it closes. Okay. That should be everything, so now we should be able to change the data. It'll close and update. Now you can go back through and remove any of your console logs if they were coming in handy. We don't need them anymore, but sometimes it's nice to do that. So we'll go back to app and remove the console log in here as well. So thank you for sticking with the series so far and getting through the last four episodes on the modal. Hopefully this is a pretty good intro on working with lists inside of state and how to pass functions down, how to maintain temporary state that we can then pass back up through that callback function, all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you're learning and coming up with some cool use cases and examples. At this point, you can probably start, you know, working on some of your own stuff, pulling these principles into it, and hopefully building something cool. We still need to learn how to extend the list, add to it, so maybe having an add button that could add new employees. We might look at that next. Guess we'll just have to see for the next video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. Peace out and be sure to subscribe.